Hi, I am Rhett Thomas. I am the editor of Tashin Books' The Stan Lee Story. And uh, The Stan Lee Story uh, was the product of about four years of intense work and, and, and uh, on my part and the writer's part, Roy Thomas wrote the book, uh, Josh Baker, art director, and we had contributing writers that I'll talk about as we get into this. Uh, and finally, uh, our book has come out. And uh, it's a book on the life and times of Stan Lee, uh, who just passed away a few weeks ago. And in fact, I got um, this book in the mail uh, the day before his birthday, so uh, which was December 22nd. I haven't had a chance to actually open it yet. I've been saving it for a time when I could actually focus on it and give it the attention it deserves. And that time is now. So uh, I figured I'd do an unboxing video. So since there's only a thousand copies of these printed so that people could see what all the fuss is about, because this is a very uh, beautiful uh, book that sold out within two days of us putting it on sale. And, uh, and so why don't we just open the box and see what's in it? First of all, let's take a look at the box. This is not your normal shipping container. Um, Tashin went all out. I know the art director, Josh Baker, helped put this design together. As you can see, um, there's a lot of Stan's characters that he created on the surface of the box. And Stan Lee's story on the side. And on the end of the box, we have Stan himself as Spider-Man, which uh, is, of course, one of his greatest creations with Steve Ditko. So this is a great way to start the experience of diving into this book. And this is a box you're not going to throw away. I'm going to keep this box forever. So it's a shame I even have to open it. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, this book took a long time to get done, but the results show in the book. It's, good. it's a good one. Uh, Stan was participating in the book. He gave us access to his archives and all his photographs, family heirlooms, things like that. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Okay, first we have gloves. Why do we have gloves? Because this is a museum quality book. So I'm gonna put these on. They did not mention this was part of the purchase price, but, uh, but it's pretty cool. Let's put the gloves on. Now, what is sitting here is a facsimile copy of Stan's 1947 book, Secrets Behind the Comics. 1947, he would have been 25 years old, approximately. And uh, the comic book business had seen its first uh, boom uh, in the World War II era. And so in 1947, superheroes were sort of on the decline and they were expanding into other genres, like Westerns were becoming very popular, romance comics were becoming popular. But Stan um, was one of the first to uh, create a continuum between uh, the comics professionals and, and readers and potential uh, artists and, and writers. So this book was a little insider account of what it takes to get into comics, how to break into the job, kind of um, teaching you how to lay out a comic, things like that. I mean, he had a lot of examples from his contemporary artists at the time. This is a real neat novelty. It's, it's a rarity too. So Tashin has made a facsimile of this and included it with the limited edition. That's awesome. I've never had a copy before now. So let's see what this is. Okay, there's two boxes inside this box. That one's rather light. So I'm thinking the book itself is in this box. Okay, so I'm gonna take this box and set it aside. Woo! It's heavy, folks. Okay, so this is the book. Let's uh, see, what, see what we have here. Very tightly packed. Okay. All right. So here's our book. As you can tell, it's big. So let's go ahead and open the covering here. So give you an impression of how big it is standing on its side. Oh, wow. OK, 
Okay, so this is uh, this is the front of the book. Got a sneak preview of this image on the side of the box, the shipping container. Let me go ahead and clear all this. So this is the front cover. Josh Baker did a great design on this. Um, there's the imprint of these uh, all his classic characters, the X Men, Doctor Doom. Uh, here's the leader. So we have some ex obscure characters as well. Uh, and on our spine, we have more characters: Thor, uh, Black Panther, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Daredevil, Thing, and Iron Man. And on the back, we have a modern-day photo of Stan uh, on the back cover. So that's our book. So let's see what we have here. Let me move this box. So let's open the book together, shall we? Nice end papers. This is our title page. Okay, so here is, uh, this is number nine, nine, 98. I need my reading glasses. So this is book number 98 out of 1,000. And Stan signed, uh, signed this, uh, this page. He signed these pages a couple years ago. Um, and then we tipped it in in the printing process. So of course the book was published um, literally days before Stan sadly passed away in November. Um, and it took a while for these, this to ship across the ocean to me. But he signed these two years ago. And so this is his legitimate handwritten signature. Uh, beautiful title page here. Okay. So now, there's Roy Thomas's name. Roy wrote the essay in this book. It's a very extensive, in-depth essay. Roy, of course, was one of the first comic book professionals that was a fan of comic books growing up. Of course, Stan wasn't a fan of comic books. They weren't even invented when he was a boy. But Roy Thomas stood by Stan Stide for, for 15 years at Marvel. He became editor-in-chief in Marvel, the first editor-in-chief after Stan. And so Roy is uniquely positioned to write a very heartfelt, very in-depth and incisive essay on Stan. So this is where the essay begins. One neat little touch that Josh dreamed up, Josh Baker's the art director again, was opening each chapter. We broke this down essentially in uh, decades, basically. And so um, the first chapter has letterhead from Stanley Lieber uh, from his Hewlett Harbor home. And then in later chapters, we copy the letterhead of Marvel Comics at its various addresses, moving all across Manhattan. Um, and then POW Entertainment, when Stan moved out to LA and started at POW, so we have letterhead from POW Entertainment. And so it, it reflects the moves in Stan's life um, in each decade based upon the letterhead that was chosen to kick off the chapter. So this is where the chapter begins. And... Um, Show this first few pages here. Here's some childhood photos of Stan. Some of these have never been seen before. Some of them have, but we had access to the original photographs and in this size, they look better than ever. Um, I wrote a lot of the captions. Um, also contributing writers to the captions were um, Jess Harold, uh, who's written a lot of things for Marvel Comics over the years. Um, Nick Caputo, uh, and uh, Dr. Michael Vassallo and Barry Pearl. And they were all contributors to the Marvel 75th book um, that Tashin published. And so we, we all make a good team. And um, all these captions were written um, with a lot of information and a lot of, frankly, a lot of passion because we all love Stan. Here's a picture of Stan from his yearbook. Um, and it's got text accompanying from, from uh, his days as a student in high school in the Bronx, DeWitt Clinton High School, a lot of famous alumni from there. So then we also included some of his, uh, you know, inspirations as a kid. So we have a Buck Rogers strip, for example. This is the kind of stuff that Stan would be reading in his idle time. He read everything and he absorbed all this stuff. And then when he became a comic book professional, quite unexpectedly for him and for everyone, all this kind of stuff would, uh, would come out. 
in his work. The pulps, Marvel, original Marvel pulps from Martin Goodman's uh, company. They were a big pulp publisher. Stan would have been reading some of this stuff. And then the first issue of Marvel Comics. Stan wasn't yet a part of Marvel, but he very soon would be. Here's some early pages of Submarine and Human Torch. And they look fantastic. These are, these are shot from the original books themselves. Um, a collector was gracious enough to share these, these priceless comic books with us. I say priceless, not literally priceless, but so expensive that you and I might as well label them priceless. But they're signed by Bill Everett and Carl Burgos, the creators of Human Torch and Submariner from the private collector's uh, collection. So that's a neat thing to have in this size. So uh, another interesting facet of this book is um, the tip-in comics that we have. And each, each chapter, each decade really, we have a representation of some of Stan's best work. So this is a facsimile comic book that we've tipped in. It's uh, some stories from that era. Uh, Stan, of course, created The Destroyer, uh, one of his World War II era superheroes. And so we have this comic book here. It's a whole comic book reading experience that Stan wrote. Um, so that's in here. Uh, and as you, as you read his biography, uh, you can also enjoy some of the original comic books, complete unedited comic books that he wrote. So flashing forward, we'll scroll through here. We get through the Atlas era, which was the 1950s. A lot of the Westerns that Stan edited and wrote. Venus. All this com classic comics material. Here's uh, the monster comics that he and Jack Kirby dreamed up. We have a lot of artwork. Steve Ditko too, can't forget him. Uh, here's another uh, tip in we have of some of the comics that he wrote uh, in that era. Some of the stories from the monster comics and the suspense comics during the Frederick Wortham hysteria. They're all represented. His work with Joe Manili on the Black Knight. We have this beautiful page. I can't wait to take a look at this, closer look at this. But this beautiful page, bigger than it's probably ever been seen. Shot from the original comic book pages. Here's some original art from the Black, Black Knight. Here's some uh, humor material that Stan edited, the Snafu magazine. Um, of course, Groot, who is in Tales to Astonish, one of Stan's creations that they never dreamed would become a huge box office uh, hit. Let's see. Now we get into the Marvel Age. We have a, a long sequence of Rawhide Kid that was sort of a early indicator of the directions that Marvel Age would take creatively with its characters. Here's another letterhead from when Marvel started up, the Marvel Comics Group in the early 60s. So we copied this letterhead for this chapter. When the Fantastic Four was created, of course, Millie the Model and Patsy Walker were going strong, the Avengers and Spider-Man. So we have uh, all this stuff covered. Uh, Sergeant Fury, this is a beautiful spread of Sergeant Fury. Doctor Strange, it really doesn't quit the... Um, the 60s and, and early 70s was just one thing after another from Stan as far as contributing to the popular culture. He and his artists, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, uh, are responsible for so many things that are household names now. Uh, the Avengers, the Green Goblin, X-Men. These are some original art pages from the X-Men, reproduced at beautiful quality. Keep going here. Spider-Man No More, which was uh, a classic issue, is reprinted here. Uh, Spider-Man number 50, the whole comic is included. Um, this is a particular month, one month in the life of Marvel. Um, and this was the most comics they had produced. I think this is from 1968. Um, I wish I had my reading glasses on. <laughs> uh, but uh, these are all the comics that Stan was editing at the time. He, had, he was responsible for all these comics looking great, the covers looking great, and getting out on time. It was a formidable job, and he was able to do it. So moving into the 70s, when Stan uh, basically quit writing comics in the early 70s and moved on to uh, executive duties as publisher of Marvel Comics. This is where Roy Thomas takes over as editor-in-chief. Um, here's some material from Jim Starlin, 
uh, who was, Stan was a publisher of the company at the time when Marvel's cosmic universe, the Guardians of the Galaxy and things like that started to, to get going. We have some great pictures in here too of some pop culture influences that Stan had at the time. Here's a great punk band from the 70s that had a hit song on the UK charts borrowing uh, comic book titles of Stan Lee for their lyrics. So that's pretty cool. Death of Gwen Stacy, a seminal moment in comic history. Uh, reprint magazine, Stan traveled the world selling Marvel to other countries. They would publish it in other languages. The Electric Company introduced Spider-Man to a lot of little kids. Uh, the Film International magazine, which uh, Stan launched out in uh, Los Angeles when he started going out there. A lot of people don't realize Star Wars uh, was first published at Marvel before the Star Wars movie came out. So Roy Thomas wrote it. He had access to all the early drafts of the scripts of, of Star Wars. Here's, here's a copy, um, an edited version of the 1978 graphic novel that Stan and Jack are united on. How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, that's still in print today, one of the classic how-to comic book, uh, how to draw comics books that Stan wrote with John Buscema. Uh, the Cartoon Revolution of the 80s that Stan launched when he was in Los Angeles. Here's a picture of Stan at home in Beverly Hills. Um, Stan helped launch the uh, animation facility for Marvel, and all those early cartoons came out of that studio. And even though he was no longer involved directly in the comics, his influence was still there. So we include a lot of the sort of the tree of life as far as Stan goes with his comic book uh, creations. Um, in the 90s, it was a rough decade for comic books, but uh, Stan was up to a bunch of stuff and we sort of get into that. He even wrote some Spider-Man comics. We have those included here. And then in the 2000s, the uh, movies start to come out and Stan becomes a worldwide pop culture icon. And uh, the X-Men movie, uh, his cameos, his 9-11 contribution here uh, to a 9-11 tribute book, we include, I think we have more than one page of that, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this one page is blown up huge and looks beautiful. His dabbling with DC in the 2000s, Who Wants to Be a Superhero, his reality show, which was uh, a big hit. Um, some of his latter-day writing exploits, which were really hilarious. He, he, he wrote a lot of comedic stuff. And then the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Avengers. Here's some uh, cameo pictures of him with Chris Evans as Captain America. We have a, all the movie posters that Stan did a cameo in, produced here. Um, we have some other, a lot of material covering uh, his film exploits. Um, we have some cool little, uh, as Stan became a pop culture icon, you know, he would show up in a lot of toy lines, little weird uh, bobbleheads and statues and whatnot. He became a Simpsons character, a literal Simpsons character. Um, all the, you know, pop culture, the nerd culture that exists today, it really didn't exist in the way it, when Stan was creating all this stuff, it just didn't exist in the same way. Now we take it for granted, but all the people that are in it now uh, want to look back and give Stan the accolades he deserves. And so we have a lot of that, uh, a lot of that stuff represented in this book. Um, a lot of homages to Fantastic Four number one, um, one of Stan's great contributions to the world. So anyway, uh, with these gloves on, it's a little tough to zero in on the last pages, but suffice to say, um, it's a beautiful book. I, I just can't believe I finally have it. See if there's anything special here at the end. Um, so, Tashin uh, is known for pulling out all the stops, and this book does that and more. Um, I was proud to have edited it. Um, Roy Thomas, his essay uh, is phenomenal. I learned so much about Stan that I didn't know, and from Roy's point of view, uh, Roy loves Stan, owes a lot to Stan, and that admiration shows uh, in some of the heartfelt passages of their time together. Sort of a fly on the wall at Marvel, reading Roy's direct testimony of, of their working together. So, um, and then finally, here's this plexiglass slipcase that the book is gonna be housed in. Let's see if I can tear this off. This is so beautiful. Like I said, Tashin does not, spare any expense for presentation with their 
luxury books. And this is an heirloom. And the 1,000 people on this planet that have a copy of this are going to treat it. Treat it that way. So this is the Puxigoss slipcase. And uh, let's see if I can do this here. Uh, if I can put it in here. I, it won't last in here long because I'm actually going to take the book out and start reading it. But let's see what it looks like in the slipcase. There we go. The Stanley story. It's a thing of beauty. Uh, it's not just a book. It's a literal work of art. Just like Stan. And uh, we'll miss him. And um, he did get to see this book before he passed away. Uh, Benedict Toshin, the publisher uh, of, of Toshin Books, got to visit with Stan uh, just 10 days before he passed away. Brought him a copy of this. And they got to look at it. And Stan loved it. Stan said it's the best book ever. <laughs> and uh, so we were all very gratified that he got to see it. Because it came as a great shock that he passed away to us. Um, and we're all very sad that he's not around to sort of take a victory lap along with this book. Um, but he did get to see it, and so we're all happy about that. Anyway, uh, I think there's a trade edition of this coming out. Um, it won't be this big deluxe uh, edition. It'll be a very affordable copy. Um, and I think that's coming out sometime in, uh, later this year. So I'll, if you keep in touch with me, I'll let you know when that is. Uh, but I have a feeling that you'll be hearing about it um, publicized. Um, because it'll be definitely a book, be a book that a lot of Stan fans and Marvel fans will want to have. So anyway, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video, and I'm going to get to reading this now. Thank you.